so hello friends welcome you all to my youtube channel today i will discuss two different problems this will be a very short video not uh, too many questions i will discuss so i request all of you to please like share comment and subscribe to my channel today i'll discuss about one important problem it is little bit uh, related uh, to electrochemistry and two questions i'll discuss one about your equivalent point in a titration so we are interested in potentiometric titration and another one your conductance the molar conductance or any conductance or call roots law so let's start and see how much we can explain so this is a question came in uh csr some year uh, two three times this question came i have seen in different year now they are asking in a potentiometric titration the end point is characterized by uh they have given four options and where e is the emf of the titration cell and volume is v of the titrant added okay so i hope all of you are familiar with the titration okay titration there can be a various type for example uh, acid base titration oxidation redox uh, uh, oxidation reduction titration or redox titration like that okay but the point is that in, in a titration potentiometric titration how to identify the your end point okay so what you see when you do the experiment basically you will see this kind of graph so you will start with your initial uh, type trend you are adding which is in small amount and slowly 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 you will see the sudden jump is there and then again there is a near constant t okay or the, there will be less change in the value of the emf okay so this is the profile which you get when you do potentiometric titration okay so initially you will do not see very minute change okay like there is no change and suddenly at one point you will see a huge jump and then again there will be almost uh, constancy now this point is known as your equivalent point okay this volume is your equivalent volume volume okay so this is important now uh because this graph is difficult to interpret where is the equivalent point exactly sometimes it may be little bit of bent so in order to solve this problem it is better to do derivative okay now when you do a derivative of this graph what you will get you will get a very nice a nice graph where you will see that you can clearly see the maxima okay So in order to determine this, uh, in this graph it is very easy because you are able to see clearly the maxima. And if you see, if you draw a line from here, this will be your uh, equivalent volume. Okay. Now, or you can say end point volume. But if you see this one, the value of the E by D V is not zero. it has a very large volume it is a maximum volume okay so the first condition is that your de by dv is not zero at your end point okay so at the end point you have a maximum value okay now we know from mathematics is that if you have a some maxima at some point and its derivative will be zero now this is the derivative of this graph okay that's why you can see here it's a d square e by d d square so we know the derivative uh, the slope of a maxima and minima is zero now here you can see that this is also another easy way to identify the equivalent point if you cannot identify with this one people will go what this now here we can see that the value of d square e by db square is zero at the 
E. Why it is zero? Because if you consider this point, the value of this one is in the positive direction. Also, it has this much value, and in the negative direction, also it has exactly same value. Now, if you add them, positive and negative, ultimately you will get zero. Okay, so this is the reason uh, for the. Uh, uh, so you can see that uh, this option. B is the answer. <coughs> so initially, if you do an experiment, you will get this kind of graph. Sometimes it is very difficult to interpret. Then it is better to do a derivative of the graph, which you obtain from the experiment, to determine the equivalent point. Now, if you do a double derivative of this, uh, one more derivative of this one, so ultimately you will get this kind of graph. And here you can see that value of d square by e, d b square at d e, or this is a equivalence point or n point is zero because at this point uh, the value of this one, this d square e by d b square, it has in both directions. So in the positive direction also it has a value, negative direction also it has a value, and it is exactly same. And because of this, when you add the two uh, of both sides, positive and negative, ultimately it will give you a value of zero. So the answer for this question is d e by d b is not equal to zero. You can see it has a maximum value at equivalent point, and then at your uh, equivalent point, d square e by d b square is. So this is a very important question, very confusing question. So please uh, try to understand that why you are doing this. Okay, now let us look into the, the next problem. Next, uh, this is also from uh, CSIR question. So this is about the conductivity. So Carlos law is applicable to a dilute solution of potassium chloride in hexane, acetic acid in water, hydrochloric acid in water, and benzoic acid in benzene. Okay, now Carlos law says that with infinite dilution, which is kind of a uh, huge dilution, if you, if you take some compound, make a solution with a lots of, lots of solvent, okay, then you can call it as a infinite dilution. The molar conductivity of strong electrolytes vary linearly with the square root of the concentration, okay. Now, this is the, this is the equation which Paulus found so this is the molar conductivity. What, what, what is the meaning of this? Of course, if you know that if you take a solution of, for example, sodium chloride, it can conduct electricity. Now, how much it has a capacity? What is the resistance? All these things will define my conductivity. Okay. Now, the conductivity will depend on the ionic nature. So, what kind of ion I have? Is it a small ion, is it a bigger ion, or what kind of electrolyte electrolyte I am taking? Okay. Now Carlutz found that when you do an infinite dilution, that means you add lots of solvent, then the conductivity you can explain in terms of ionic conductivities. Okay. And this means that uh, sorry, this means that this positive ion has no influence by the negative ion, and the negative ion has no effect or is not influenced by any way with the positive ion. Okay, that means these ions are independent in nature. It, it doesn't, uh, it's like even though in a solution you have both the ions, so this positive ion feels that it is only present in the solution and the negative ion feels that it is uh, only it is there in the solution now these represent your stoichiometric uh, coefficient suppose if you have a, have a salt like sodium chloride so it is one is to one suppose calcium chloride ca cl2 that means you have a two cl minus and one ca so these are your coefficient of the respective Ions. Okay, 
Now, in order to solve this problem, uh, basically we are interested in a strong electrolyte. So I have noted down here two important things. To solve this problem, you need to know about the nature of electrolyte. So usually, you can have a strong electrolyte or you can have a weak electrolyte. Number two, the nature of solvent. You can have a polar solvent, you can have a non-polar solvent. Okay, strong electrolytes means what? So if you put the electrolyte in the in a solvent and it will completely ionize. Okay. And this is your partially ionized. Now potassium chloride is a very strong electrolyte in water, but not in hexane. That means this will dissolve in a very small amount. Okay. The solubility of potassium chloride in hexane is almost negligible, you can say. But some will be there, but it is almost negligible. While acetic acid is a very weak electrolyte, it will ionize, but the degree of ionization is not very high. Now, hydrochloric acid is a polar strong electrolyte in in water. It will ionize completely. Okay, so if you put, if you take one molecule of HCl in water, it will completely ionize into uh, H plus and H minus, or you can think of if you take a one mole of hydrochloric acid, okay, uh, in some small amount of water, it will completely ionize. Okay, benzoic acid also is not a very strong uh, electrolyte. Also, the solubility it has a solubility issue. Okay, uh, because it, it has to ionize, it has to form H plus and then join. So, this is again a non polar medium, so it doesn't like to uh, get solubilized. Okay, benzoic acid is not going to solubilize in benzene in significant amount. So, the answer for this question is you have only one compound where you can apply this for loops law because uh, of its high uh, ionization, complete ionization. So when you add in water, it will completely ionize and uh, you can see that this, this combination will follow this uh, equation. Okay. So these are the two questions which I have discussed today. So if you guys have any doubt about this, these two questions, Please uh, raise questions and uh, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you for today, guys. See you again, again in some other video. Bye-bye.